All right, everybody, let's continue on. We're almost through the end here with 2013's Curse of Chucky, again, directed by Don Mancini, which is great. He directed from C to Chucky onward through the TV series. And obviously we have Brad Dorif returning, as always, with the voice of Chucky. And we have his daughter, Fiona Dorif, who was just, when, I, when this movie came out, man, I saw it for the first time. She's so good in this movie and the next one and the TV series like she's just splendid just watching her and just the whole fact of Brad Dorif being in this series from the very beginning doing the voice of Chucky and then 20 something years later having his daughter brought in to the series and everything to play a major role is just awesome just, ha just having Brad Dorif's daughter in this and in the next one so cool now, like, when this movie was first, like, advertised and stuff, and we saw the trailer and stuff, I remember it vividly, and I remember they pretty much played this like it was a reboot, or a remake, or, like, even just, like, a soft reboot, like, because we still had Doris voices, Chucky, and everything, so we really didn't know where this was going, and the whole reveal, you know, later in the movie, with Barb taking the the plastic off his face and everything and seeing the scars and shit that was awesome just seeing like all right good like they're continuing with the story from all the last movies and everything and found out that this was indeed a sequel to seed and not just like a, a reboot or a soft reboot whatever you want to call it but um awesome that they kept the kept the same story going throughout all of these films into the tv series it's really really cool and Nika is such a great character, and she's so adorable when she first gets in the beginning when they get the package and the guy's hitting on her, and then she, like, says to her mom, like, was he hitting on me? Like, I think he was hitting on me. I should go, like, talk to him and stuff. And, like, the mother, like, shoots that down, doesn't want to see her get hurt. But she's so adorable, like, in that opening scene, like, so cute. The, one of the, I have a few gripes with this movie. Like, I have said in all these videos i love every single entry in this series this is by far the darkest movie i think out of all of them and not just like an atmosphere and like the tone of it and everything like it just like in general like it's a dark movie <laughs> like it all takes place in this house and it's fucking just like dark throughout like the whole movie with the thunder going on the whole night and everything like it's, it adds a lot to like the atmosphere of this movie because even without that just the tone of this and the atmosphere is absolutely the darkest movie in this franchise so that's good to have it return to its horror roots which i'm sure a lot of people who did not like bride or especially seed which i said in the last video i loved but a lot of people <laughs> most people hated that movie and that was a reason we had to wait almost 10 years to get this. It was 2004 with Seed. So, yeah, that, that movie pretty much killed this franchise until they came out with this nine years later. But um, his look in this, I just don't like Chucky's look in this. Like, once they reveal that he's just still, it's, it's just all in the same story and they ha he has his scars and everything like that, he looks better. But just for the whole part of the movie leading up to that, he just looks so bad. Like, he just looks like a fat, like like chubby Chucky. Like he just looks not right to me at all. Like it's just one thing. It takes me out of the movie every time I see this. It's just and I even knowing that rev that reveal is coming and everything and that it's you know his scars are underneath the plastic and stuff. It's still like I just can't get past how he looks. Like I just don't like his look in the most of this movie until that reveal later but that's just one minor gripe i have with this mostly i love this movie just like every single other one why would you throw a doll like she, the mom throws the doll away in like their kitchen garbage can like why why wouldn't you just throw it outside in the garbage and have the garbage men take it from when they come like you throw it in your kitchen garbage and then you're just gonna have to be throwing more shit on top of it and it's gonna take up so much room in that garbage like why not just put it in the plastic bag and throw it outside 
Because you'd be making dinner later and stuff. You're going to be throwing scraps and food and everything. And then you're going to be like, shit, there's no room in here. Because I got a fucking, like, big-ass doll sticking inside the garbage can. I don't know. These are the things I think about, as you guys know. Um, Nika's whole reflection, that whole shot of her reflection in her mom's blood after she finds her mom you know, with the knife sticking out of her and fell off the banister and on the floor and everything. That's such a cool shot. Uh, for, there's a lot of cool shots in this movie. There's a lot of cool stuff in this movie. Like I said, like the atmosphere and everything is great throughout this. The tone is dark as, dark as shit. Like the score is very good in this movie. This might be one of my favorite scores in the series. Like I said, the first movie is probably is my favorite score. The second one, probably close behind that. This might be right after that. Like it has a really, really good score in this movie. And the setting too, just like in the house, like it's a beautiful house, but it's like I said, like it's dark, man. Like it, it works so well with the tone of this movie, like the setting of the house and everything. Barb, the sister, is such a bitch, man. I can't stand her character in this. Like what a bitch. When her just sitting down with Nika and trying to make it sound like she cares for her and that she wants to put her in assisted living and everything and that sell the house and that way she'll be set for life. And even Nika says, like, this isn't about me, this is about money. And it's exactly what it's about. Fucking, she doesn't give a shit about her sister, man. She just wants the fucking money. And then she says that, oh, we're struggling and Ian's working at a Starbucks and we're going to have to send Alice to public school. Like, oh, the horror. Fucking that poor Alice is going to have to go to public school. Fucking blah, blah, blah. White person, first world problems. Fucking <laughs> so stupid. Like, God forbid she has to go to fucking public school and not fucking private school. Jesus, at the expense of your sister, nonetheless. Like, let's shove her in assisted living just so little Alice can go to a uh, private school. So stupid, and I can't stand her character in this. I love the top down shot of the dinner table with the chili and stuff, and they have like all the bowls of chili around the table, and it's just like an aerial shot, like looking down on it, and as it's like twirls around and stuff. Really cool shot. Ian is so fucking weird, man, like, just like, and there's a lot of this in this movie, but I'll get to it in a little bit, but like him, like his two reactions at the dinner table, when he's like, she's going, when Alice is about to eat the chili, and he just like, reaches for her, and he's like, wait, uh, and like, I want to, daddy wants to make a toast, like, who reacts like that, like, <laughs> he did it just, like, that's just in there, to just try to make it seem like, it's, you know, the rat poisons in her chili, possibly, and just to play off all of that. Who reacts like that to make a toast? No one is the answer. Like, nobody. And then the whole thing again with him, like a few, like a minute or two later, when he, they start eating, and he's like, oh my god. Oh my god. And they're like, looking like, what? And he's like, this is so good. And it's like, dude, fuck you. Seriously? Come on. Who acts like that? Who does that? Nobody. That's so fucking stupid. That really annoys me. Like, that really annoyed me on this rewatch especially. Because I've only seen this movie maybe like two, three times. This and Cult are the least watched. And it makes sense because they're the newest ones in the franchise. But, oh, that was so annoying. It was just like the fake out. Like, there's so many fake out jump scares in this movie. Which is another thing that gets to me. Like... Like I've said on here, I don't like jump scares unless like it's really well done and there's just a lot of them in here that are just fake out jump scares like when Jill comes up on Nika and stuff and scares the shit out of her and uh, when Barb just appears behind Jill before they make out and everything like there's so many of those and it's just it's like oh, really come on like you guys had to go that whole route with these stupid jump scares and then like Ian and Jill, like, with the, like, they tried so hard, like, too hard, to make it like they were having an affair, Ian and Jill, when we find out that it was Barb and Jill having an affair. Like, they went way overboard with that. Because who is, who acts like that? Like, if people are having an affair and stuff, right in front of the wife, right in front of their daughter, right in front of the, the, the aunt of the daughter and everything, like your wife's sister, like, in front of the priest, like, come on. Like, they made it way too, I don't know, they put, like, way too much effort into trying to make us think that they were having an affair, just to reveal that it was Barb and Jill. 
Like they could have been a lot more subtle with that. Because even I remember when I first saw this, I said, they're definitely not having an affair. Like it's too obvious. Like it's, they've gone way too overboard with that. And I, they definitely did. And it's a tense scene with the chili and everything. Like it's really, really tense. Like you know, the way that they uh, shoot it and everything. But then I think about it and I'm like, how did Chucky know who's going to eat the chili? Like, we see at the end that, like, he gets sent to Alice's grandma's house and stuff, and he does the chant and everything on her, so, like, he needed her, right? So, like, how did he, like, know that she wouldn't be the one to get the chili with the rat poison in it? Or that it would be Nika or something? Like, didn't he want to explain the whole reason he's there and everything? Like, cause that makes no sense to me. Like, because they bring it out and stuff, there's no way that he knew what order that they were putting that chili down around the table. Like, at all. And yet it still works out <laughs> that it happens to be the father and the one person who would get up and leave because the rest of them are staying over at the house. So it's just it's very convenient, like very, very convenient for the plot. But still a tense scene. And then um, we have the, ac the accident scene. The father got in an accident after being poisoned and then the cop comes and everything. And just the fact that he says that like that uh, the father wasn't drinking anymore and stuff and that the father was the, the cop sponsor and stuff and then the other cop says to him you're gonna need a drink after this like that's fucked up dude seriously <laughs> that guy's fucking an admitted alcoholic and you're telling him like you're gonna need a drink like that's fucking wrong dude like you don't do that to somebody but fucking and then we get that cool ass fucking scene there's a lot of great deaths in this movie like the kills are are, are awesome and like we see the father pinned against the, the in the car and stuff like that and then they pull it away and his head fucking just falls off and everything really really cool really good stuff and then she, barb makes a comment when she says to alice when she's going to bed and she says make sure to brush your teeth and brush your hair i've i've never heard that like who brushes their hair before they go to bed do you like i i've never heard that like, I've honestly never heard that before. <laughs> like, brush your hair before you go to bed? That just is so weird to me. Again, just a tiny nitpick, but like, so strange. Like, I've never heard that. Maybe it happens, I don't know. But I got a daughter and she, she never brushes her hair before she goes to bed. <laughs> and I'll tell you that, like, very, very strange that line was. Um, and then we get the whole reveal with Barb and Jill and stuff that are having an affair and like they are way open with it Like they're just making out and shit right in the kitchen and stuff Anybody could come down for water in the middle of the night or for anything and <laughs> They just don't give a fuck like it's way too obvious with them like they need to Like have like a little like sign language type thing and stuff that they can communicate like safe time to fuck <laughs> But Jill is so hot in this movie too Very very nice and then, what the hell did I even write here? Oh, and then when Alice is saying like what Chucky said to her and stuff to Barb, like just like in the first Child's Play when Andy's saying to his mom and everything, and I forget what she even said. She's like saying, we're all gonna die and stuff like that. And um, whatever she said, I don't remember. I can't stand Barb, so anytime she's on screen, it's like, oh, fuck. But um, again, like hearing your kid say that and all this weird shit, and then blaming it on a doll. And she has such an underreaction to this. <laughs> like, come on, really? Like, she doesn't think this is strange, like, at all? Like, she just completely blows it off. Like, and says, all right, well, like, go to bed. And then, like, and then she says, uh, Alice says, uh, don't forget Chucky. And she has to go kiss Chucky and stuff. That's funny. That's some funny shit. <laughs> and you can see how, like, reluctant she is. Like, because she's creeped out by this doll. And, like, she, like, reaches over and then, like, kisses it real quick and, like, moves away. <laughs> and then Alice being scared and stuff from the thunderstorm. And then she goes under the blankets with Chucky and stuff. And then she says, Chucky, I, I, I'm scared of the storm or whatever. And she's, he's like, you fucking should be. And, and then she just goes back to bed after that, I, I guess. Like, because we only see on the nanny cam... Like, when he had her playing hide-and-go-seek and locked her in the closet or whatever. But after that, like, I'm pretty sure you could see Chucky and her in the bed. Like, when Jill scares Nika and stuff. And then they're talking and stuff and saying that and Jill says 
<laughs> that's a funny line when Jill says like I don't care if the Manson family sent the doll and stuff like as long as like I've never seen her this happy and everything she's been sad lately and stuff but like it you could see them in the bed so like after hearing Chucky say that <laughs> that you fucking should be scared she just rolled back over and went to sleep like hugging Chucky like that's fucking weird man like <laughs> come on that's so strange but hey kids I, I, I guess it doesn't face her at all I don't know does anyone plan on emptying that bucket or fixing the, the leaky roof? Because that bucket's like like filled almost to the top and it doesn't seem like anyone cares. <laughs> and then you get your answer right after that. Yeah, Chucky plans on emptying that bucket <laughs> because he kicks it over and electrocutes fucking Jill and stuff. And that's an awesome scene. Even though like throughout like the rest of the movie they show her body like two or three times and like her eye is still smoking like come on get the fuck out of here their eye would not still be like smoking and stuff from being electrocuted that long after it happening to her like that's a little silly little bit silly guys electrocutes blah 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 and then again i just put it like his face and, and i just I, oh, I can't stand his look at the beginning of this movie and until the reveal and stuff uh, oh, i don't know what they were thinking with that like and yeah you can argue that like of course he looks fatter because there's more plastic on his face and everything to hide the scars but i don't care like they could have done something else like they could have made him look better they could have anything and then still had that reveal with it having the scars on on his face. Just the way he looks, man, it, it just, it takes me out of the movie, it does. And then Ian with the, nan, the nanny cam and the, and the doll and everything. Which when I thought of this, like, at the end of the movie, you know, I was like having my like final thoughts and stuff, like reprocessing everything. Doesn't that, wouldn't that like help exonerate Nika? Like when the cops show up and everything and then they go through the house inevitably and everything before she stands trial Wouldn't they find his laptop and find the feed and everything and showing that the doll was moving around and everything on its own that it wasn't Nika Like they don't address that Like they don't address the laptop or anything So like that doesn't make sense like if they went through that house they would definitely take everything they see a laptop there, and especially with the doll, like if they, that when we see Chucky in the court, in the courtroom and everything. So they brought Chucky into court. You don't think they went through this doll or checked them out, and then they would, they would have found the camera. And then they, you know, put two and two together. There's a camera here, and they take that laptop immediately. And none of that makes sense. <laughs> like the whole nanny cam thing, like makes no sense at all, at all. And then the, we never see. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, but we do not see Chucky anywhere near that kitchen when Jill and uh, Barb are making out in the kitchen and stuff. Like, we don't. And then the only reason we see the footage of Chucky standing there watching them is because of Ian having the argument with Barb and stuff about, you know, him knowing about the affair and him putting the nanny cam in. And then when he goes over the footage, we see it just to, like, confirm that, you know, he got evidence of it. But Chucky was never there. <laughs> like they, they never showed him, at least. I, like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, because I take notes sometimes. And if I'm looking down for a second, maybe I missed something. But I really don't think so. Like I do not think Chucky was there in that scene at all. Which, of course, he, they could have just not showed it and stuff. This is just me nitpicking and everything, like I always do. But yeah, he wasn't there. Like <laughs> not at all. And then we have Barb and Nico arguing and stuff, and ah, oh, it just makes me hate her so much in this movie man well, i cannot stand barb's character and her just and he could scream it up at her like just after doing the research and stuff and finding out about andy and, and chucky the doll and then looking back more and finding charles lee ray and seeing his picture and she noticed early earlier in the movie when they're watching the whole movies and said who's that creepy guy and everything and put it all together and she's saying scream put the doll down right after barb and ian had that whole argument about the camera in it and everything and she won't even listen to nika for a second like for a second like she just just keeps interrupting her so like, you know about this you know what's inside here and <laughs> i mean it's funny that like they they're both talking about completely different things and like the other one just doesn't get what the other one's talking about but really like you just can't let your sister speak for a fucking second i don't know <laughs> that's just all for all just convenient to the plot 
I know a lot of this sounds like I'm like hating on this movie, but <laughs> this is just what I do and nitpick and fix. Anyone who's seen my videos knows this and stuff, but I, I really love this movie, like every other one in the franchise. But it's just, that's just my thing. I don't know. And then, uh, when she, um, when Barb takes Chucky up the stairs and stuff into the attic and she's looking for Alice and everything, and then she finds the knife inside him in his shirt or whatever, she pulls the knife out. And she's obviously freaked out by that. But then she just puts Chucky down and puts the knife right next to his hand. Like, <laughs> that's so weird. Like, I mean, of course, you're not thinking that this doll is really going to come to life. But, like, it is fucking weird that it, this doll has a fucking big knife in, 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 in his fucking, like, costume and his outfit and shit, his pocket, whatever you want to call it, whatever. But, like, that that's strange. Like, but you just put it down next to the, the thing you found it in? Like, I don't know. Like, if that was me, like, of course I would not think that this doll is real and alive or whatever. But I, I still, I wouldn't put that knife next to it. Like, just in case, man. <laughs> like, you never know. Like, especially, like, in real life, in our world and stuff. Like, we've seen these movies and we've seen so many other movies about inanimate objects come to life and puppets and dolls and killer dolls and all that type of shit. That just in case, <laughs> I would not put that knife next to that doll, especially after finding it inside the doll. Like there's, there's no way. Like absolutely not. That's just funny. And then there's, there's this little stupid thing that, like, I, again, it just bothered me for some reason. But when she's up there after she put the knife down next to Chucky and stuff, the rocking horse starts rocking. Why? Like for, for what? Like. What reason did they throw that in there? Like, it starts rocking, the rocking horse. And Chucky's right in plain view, right there, sitting there, where Barbara is, like, looking right at him. And then in the background, the, the rocking horse just starts moving. I don't get what that's about. Like, is it, like, a draft from the storm outside? Or did it, no, it's just to make a eerie atmosphere, I guess. It's just, like, it's not a supernatural movie. You know, I mean, you know, except for, like, Chucky being possessed and everything, and being a voodoo fucking doll and everything, but, like, why did it, why did they make that rocking horse rock like that? That makes no sense to me. And then we get to reveal with the scars and everything, which, like I said, is awesome. Just when I first saw that, just seeing, like, oh, all right, so they're continuing everything. Like, this is not a little reboot and stuff. Which, I mean, you kind of get that as it goes on, like, with her looking up, like, you know, the history and stuff, and seeing, you know, Andy's story about Chucky the Killer doll, and seeing about Charles Lee Ray and everything like that. So it's not like they were completely discounting everything in the past, but, like, once you get that reveal with the scars under, like, on his face and stuff, you're like, oh, it's the same Chucky. Like, it's the same one from the last two. Like, awesome. Really cool how that's done. And then she freaks out, obviously, when he comes to life. And then he has that that cool little line of just like, you know, you, you have the eyes like your mother and they're too fucking close together and stabs her in the eye. And I love when the eye comes rolling down the stairs and everything, but she's got green eyes, Barb, and that eyeball is blue. So I don't know what that's about. Like, <laughs> that was something they just missed, I guess, like, because I, 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 I rewound it, like, because just because it was it was really like bothering me. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, like, she, they just showed her eyes and, like, made a point of it, too. It's like, like, you have your mother's eyes and everything, and fucking, like, she had green eyes. And then that eyeball coming down, it's, it, it's blue. Like, it's obviously a blue eyeball. Like, so, I, that was just a mistake on their part. But, um, cool scene, though, with the eyeball coming down and everything. And then the shot of Chucky coming down the stairs after Nika and stuff, coming down from the attic awesome that's such a great shot man with him just slowly coming down the attic stairs with the knife in his hand and everything that's such a great shot that's one of my favorite scenes in the movie probably so good and then she runs and gets ian and ian doesn't immediately blame nika for this like he does a few minutes later but i'm talking like immediately like 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 jade and jesse style in bride like, as soon as the explosion of uh, Needle Nose's car happens, they go instantly from, like, in love, getting married, to fucking, like, I don't trust you at all. Looking like, you did this. Like, there's no other option in that point. Like, it's like, of course it's, like, if Ian knows it's not him who did this, then 
it, it's you. <laughs> like, it's Nico. Fucking like, and he doesn't immediately think that. Like, we see him carrying her down the stairs and everything. Uh, then, like, a little bit after that is when, like, he ties her up and everything like that. And he doesn't give her the injection and stuff like that. I guess, like, his mind, like, you, know, you can argue his mind was all on Alice and everything on his daughter. And he was running around the house looking for her. And he didn't think about any of this until then. So, I mean, it could be explained away. But I just thought it was weird that, like, they've used that device before in the series of just, like, total distrust as soon as like the body count starts like revealing itself and people are dead and then in this one like he doesn't immediately just think like oh well, what the fuck did you do like it's only two of them it's like i didn't do it it's like there's only one left i didn't do it the gun's missing whoever got the gun shot the girl <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite movies ever anyone who gets that reference you got brownie points in my eyes that's one of my favorite films of all time um and then we have him looking over the nanny cam video and everything and Nika's tied up and everything and he sees her, um, he sees the footage of Barb and Jill in the kitchen making out and he skips past it and he sees uh, Alice getting locked in the closet by Chucky and everything and him talking and it's when he realizes, shit, this doll's real, man. And then we get his death, which is the best in the movie. Like, his death is brutal, man. Like, <laughs> I love that so much. That is such a great kill. When you just fucking... Chucky just takes that axe and just chops his fucking, like, from ear down, his jaw, like, right off his face. Like, oh, that looks so good. Such a good fucking kill. But then, like, now Chucky's just a doll again. Because, like, he runs up on Nika, and it's a smart move by Nika, like, being numb from, you know, in her legs and stuff. How she just lifts her legs up and stuff and takes the axe in her leg. Uh, then pulls it out and like hits him and decapitates him but like now he's just a doll again like in all the last movies it's like he becomes human as time goes on and there's been a, like a few days going on like with him there at the house and stuff like but he's just like the most doll he's ever been in the franchise like yeah you, know, you see like the fucking the part that his head snaps back on like the notches and everything like that it's like a complete doll like I don't know. Like I said, voodoo. <laughs> Explains it all, as I keep saying. And so, yeah, Nika's dead, right? <laughs> when she gets thrown off the banister out of her wheelchair, she's fucking dead, man. She didn't survive that. There's no way that she survived that. Come on. Get out of here. That's so ridiculous. But she does survive, so we'll just go with it, I guess. And then we have this whole reveal with, with Chucky's past and everything and stuff with being in love with Nika's mom and we see all the flashbacks and everything and we find out that he's the one Chucky Charles whatever you want to call him Charles Lee Ray was the one who killed Nika's dad and was in love with the mom and everything and had her captive and everything and had what a great shot scene that is like such a great scene with him with Brad Dorf and the mom and stuff when she's tied up and they're having the whole conversation and it's black and white but then all the flowers are yellow that looks so cool and it just how it calls back to the mom you know drawing all the, the same picture of that same flower over and over again like at the beginning of the movie and when Barb goes up to the attic and she sees all those pictures too of the same flower what a great scene that is so cool the way they shot that reminds me of like um like Sin City a little bit like with the black and white with the colors sticking out and everything really really cool now this is where I have an issue with this whole like reveal and stuff so he was had her captive had Sarah captive and everything and the cops came which we find out Spoilers if anyone hasn't seen the TV series, just like skip forward 30 seconds. We find out that Tiffany called the cops that night on Charles, and that's what led to him getting shot and everything. So, even if we take that out and we make, even if we try to make that make sense that she called and stuff, and I guess she knew that he was with her, with Sarah and stuff, but even if we take all that out and stuff and just see what we see in this movie that the cops come and he stabs her and stuff and that's what made Nika, you know, paraplegic and everything. And then he leaves and he escapes where he has her captive, where the cops are just showing up. 
Uh, then they show him running into the toy store when, you know, after Mike is, is chasing him down and everything. So then when did he meet up with Eddie Caputo? I don't get that. Like, where was he? Like, the way they make it look in the reveal here and the little flashbacks is that he left right from where he had Sarah when the cops were right there closing in and was running from those cops. And then Norris was right on his ass. So, like, where was Caputo during all this? Like, the, I forget from the, for the series if they mention that, but that doesn't make sense to me. Like, he was, like, the getaway driver in, that, in the first movie, right? And he just left him there. And then they had the whole thing of going in the toy store and Mike shoots him and all that and he goes into the doll. So where was Caputo in this? Like, they don't address that at all. So, like, that's strange to me. And then, um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, there's so many different continuity things that are changed throughout this whole franchise. But it, it made me wonder, though. Like, where was Caputo? Like, how do, how do you make all of this make sense? I don't know. If anyone has an answer for that, let me know. Because that would be uh, really helpful <laughs> in trying to put, like, all of this together. Because this is, like, the first time that I've rewatched the entire series. Like, all seven movies. Back to back to back like this. Because I think the last time I did that was the, the last movie out with Seed. So I, I saw, you know, I watched just the first one through Seed of Chucky. But since these, this one and Cult of Chucky were so new, I haven't watched all these movies back to back since, like I said, since Seed of Chucky. So, like, it's interesting now seeing it all play out from the first movie through the end here and then into Cult and then the TV series and everything really interesting to watch that but it made me really like start thinking about like how it all is put together as they went along and stuff and that's like one of the big things that stuck out to me is like where was Caputo during this like when did he meet up with them was he like at that place with where you know where Dora had where Charles Lee Ray had Sarah captive and like when the cops came in he was going up the ladder, getting out of there, and Caputo was waiting in a, in a car outside? Like, maybe, but, like, they don't mention it. So, like, if anyone has an answer or a theory on that, definitely let me know. And then Nika st starts using her uh, little, you know, uh, psychology and completion anxiety thing that she mentioned to the delivery guy at the beginning that she studied and never finished her thesis on it and everything, and uses that on Chucky and everything and saying that it took him, he never killed Andy and it took, it's the slowest murder ever for her that it's like 25 years and everything like <laughs> really, really cool. And then she, you know, she gets stuck in the elevator with him she ends up stabbing him and then the cop comes and stuff. And then we finally get this scene in this series because I say it every time I see a movie like this like not just this franchise but like any movie with a killer doll or a killer puppet or like any inanimate object that no one would ever believe and I've said this in a few of these videos you're going to a fucking institution forever and I'm so glad that they finally showed this in this in this movie that at the end that she is standing trial for all this and she's found you know legally incompetent to stand trial and she's being remanded to a criminal a place for the criminally insane finally like great like i was so happy seeing that i mean it sucks obviously for nika and stuff like she's such a great character and everything but like just having that happen to her is terrible but it's like part of me like i said was still just like thank you <laughs> like thanks for finally addressing that because we never see that in any of these movies any killer doll movie anything like that because that's the reality like you're going to prison or you're going to an institution forever like <laughs> and we never see it and they finally threw that in there so happy to see that uh, then we have um the cop um, and there's so many cops in this in this franchise who steal evidence of chucky's remains and stuff to bring it to somebody else like there's a few throughout this franchise, man. And then he sees the... That's cool, but the scene when he sees, like, the bag breathing and stuff a little bit, and the Chucky's breathing in there, and then before he can even react, Tiffany's in the back seat and slits his throat open and everything, and they never learn. Fucking great awesomeness. Love that. Seeing fucking Tiffany again in this. When I first saw this movie and seeing her in it, I was, oh, right, we got Jennifer Tilly back. We got Tiffany back. And then she sends Chucky off to whoever's next. I don't know who it is. Like, she sent it to Alice because he's, he's there first. 
But then in the post credits, he's at Andy's. So I don't know who she was sending. It had to have been Alice because that came first. I don't know. But she gets sent to Alice's grandma where uh, she's staying with and everything. And then he does the whole chant on her and says, like, you're somebody no one would suspect and everything. And it seems like he did the whole chant. Like, it's been a while since I watched Cult, so I'm about to watch it now. And I'll report back with any uh, connections with that. But um, I remember one of the, like, the mental institution, like, women or something saying that, like, Alice isn't okay. And, like, Chucky told me or something like that. But I don't remember exactly, like, what happened with Alice. So, uh, but apparently he does, like, the whole chant and everything on her. And then we get the stupidest fucking jump scare at the end, man. Like, why they had to throw that in there with the grandma and stuff. First of all, he said that she's in the cellar. And she wasn't in the cellar. She was just lying on the ground in front of the door to the cellar. And then, <laughs> and just out of nowhere, she just pops up with a bag on her head just for a jump scare for the end. Like, really? Like, this series never relied on jump scares. Like, almost ever. Like, I can't think of one off the top of my head. But maybe there was one or two, but they're not, like, egregious or anything. This is, like, an egregious fucking jump scare. Like, like you see in, like, all modern, modern horror movies that there has to be one final scare at the end and it's usually just some demonic thing or just, like, a monster or something that just jumps into frame and, like, screams at you and then the movie ends. And that's exactly what they did here. And I just roll my eyes every time I see it. <laughs> so fucking stupid. But then we have the end credits thing, which I was watching these on Tubi, and they don't have the post credit scene. It just ended. And I was like, no, I know <laughs> that there's a fucking end credit scene. I know that we see Andy and stuff. So I have to actually just go online and watch the post credit scene. But we have six months later, and then Andy gets the package, and he fucking knows better, man, because <laughs> I said to myself, because it's like I said, it's been a while since I saw this too. But I said to myself, I'm like, this guy should know by now. If he gets a box <laughs> that's that size exactly from all his past experience, he better be he better know right off the bat. Like this is fucking a this is a good guy doll. This is Chucky fucking right off the bat. And he does, man. He's on, he's on the phone with Karen, his mom, which we find out she's a, out of the mental institution and everything that she was remanded to after the first movie so that's good to hear but we don't i don't know if we find out exactly when she was let out but uh good to hear she's out and everything uh, then uh we see pictures that's so cool we see a picture that he saved of, of kyle and everything that's that's so awesome i love kyle so much who doesn't love kyle's character and the old picture of him and his mom and him when he was a kid like in the first movie and stuff and uh, then Chucky fucking cuts out of the box and everything and like looks around and then fucking Andy just has the shotgun pointed right at him and fucking yeah, play with this and blows him away. Awesome. Such a good movie. Like I said, it's just a few gripes that I have with it. And like the little nitpicks are just what I always do. That's just me having fun watching a movie. But such a good movie. Another excellent addition to this franchise, and I am going to go watch Cult and finish this series up. So I'll see you guys soon with Cult of Shucky, and take care.